Hello everybody, welcome back to the online course on computer organization and architecture. So, in the introductory module, we have discussed or I have shown you that mainly in top level, we can see the computer component as follows. We are having the CPU or central processing unit, which is the main component and main processing element of the computer. Computer works on von Neumann stored program principle. So, for that, we need the memory unit. Okay. So, till now, I think we have discussed about the design issues of processor and we have seen how we are going to connect the main memory to the processor, what are the issues related to the memory. Today, we are going to look for the other component that I O module. Basically, we are going to see how we are going to connect input output devices to computer. So, this module is basically input output subsystem. So, in this particular module, we are going to discuss about the issues related to input output devices and how those devices will be connected to the processor and how it works. So, as usual, now we are going to see what are the objective of this particular module. So, we are going to meet some objective. So, first objective I have mentioned it like that illustrate the need of I O module to connect the peripheral devices to the processor. So, this is the objective and we are going to touch it in application level. Objective 2 state the generic structure and function of I O module. So, this is in the knowledge level only we will touch, we will see what is the structure of the I O module and what are the function of that particular I O module. Objective 3 specify the instruction to be included in the instruction set of the processor to perform the I O operation. So, this is in application level we are going to see what are the instruction that will be needed for I O operation. Objective 4 so, the addressing scheme to identify the I O devices. So, there will be lot of input output devices connected to the processor. Now, how we are going to identify those devices and basically what is the addressing scheme for those particular devices. So, this is in comprehension level. So, next objective is your objective 5 define the different modes of I O transfer programmed I O interrupt driven and DMA. So, we are having several ways to transfer the operation and basically we have three modes. So, these are basically programmed I O interrupt driven and DMA. So, we are going to elaborate these things. Objective 6 explain the transferring of the information character by character or bulk data transfer. So, if we are transferring information character by character like from keyboard or how to transfer the information in a bulk. So, from one device to the other device. Objective 7 explain the design issues of I O module for different modes namely programmed I O, interrupt driven and DMA. So, this objective is in the design level. Now, we are going to see what are the design issues for these three kind of transfer mode. And objective 8 specify the need of device controller for a specific device. So, for every device we will have a device controller. So, here in application level only we will see we will specify what is the need of those particular device controller. So, as usual this module input output subsystem is divided into four units. So, the module units is, so the module units for this particular module are unit 1 input output primitives, unit 2 interrupt driven I O, interrupt 3 uh, unit 3 DMA transfer and unit 4 storage devices. So, basically we are having this particular four units. Now, what is the module learning strategies? Basically, what are the resources or what are the reference material for this particular course, for this particular module? So, for unit 1, we are going to use that same book, Computer Organization and Architecture Design for Performance by William Stalling. So, you need to look for the section 7.1, 7.2 and 7.3 of section chapter 7. For unit 2, we are going to use the same reference book of same chapter. So, basically you need to look for section 7.4 of chapter 7 of this particular book. For unit 3, this is the section 7.5 of chapter 7 of the same book. And for unit 4, this is the same book that we are using computer organization and architecture designing for performance by William Stalling and for that we are going to look for the section 6.1 of chapter 6. So, these are the reference material that you can look into it, you can go through it to for better understanding of this particular course. So, for this module input output subsystem, now we are going to start the first unit and unit 1 is your input output primitives. So, the objective that I have defined for this particular unit is as follows. So, objective 1, 
illustrate the connection of I O devices to the processor through I O modules. So, this is an application level. Now, we are going to say how that I O devices will be connected to the computer through the I O modules. Objective 2 describe the addressing scheme of I O devices. So, we are going to meet this objective also. So, how to specify the address of a particular device. Objective 3 design the I O instruction for input output operation. So, basically, what will happen when we are going to design a processor? In the instruction set, you need to give some instruction to handle the input output devices. Uh, basically to perform the input output operation on those particular devices. So, for that what are the instruction is required. So, we are going to explain those things and we are going to give emphasis on that. And object 4 explain the design issues of program I O transfer. So, this is in the design level. So, I have mentioned that there are 4 ways 3 ways to transfer the information. So, we are going to discuss about the program I O transfer and we are going to meet this particular objective. Now, we are going to discuss about the input output subsystem. First of all, let us see what are the problem involved in this particular input output devices. So, basically, if you see that we are going to get a wide variety of peripheral devices. So, these are different peripheral devices you are going to connect. So, you can see that we are having keyboard, we are having mouse, we are having printer, monitor, hard disk. Uh, uh, CD drive, all those things. So, these are having a variety of your know, devices. So, those devices are not uniform at all. They are having different data format, they are delivering the um, data at different speed. So, again, the speed matters because if we are going to connect the slow devices to the processor, then we have to synchronize that particular slower devices. If the format of the data is different then we have to bring it to an uniform format. So, all those issues are there. So, for that we are having some problems that is why you have to need to look for this particular handling I O devices. And basically already I have talked about the speed and all are basically slower than CPU and RAM. Already we have mentioned that CPU is the faster one than the RAM. RAM is slower than CPU whereas, RAM is the primary memory or the storage unit when we come to the peripheral devices or input output devices they are much slower. It is not only electronic devices, but still they are having mechanical component also. We have to have the we have to consider the movement of the mechanical component. So, as for example, I think most of you have used the dot matrix printer. So, when you are using dot matrix printer we have to print the character by character and for that we have to move the head. When we are moving the printing head you just see that it is having a mechanical movement. So, we are having mechanical component. So, we have to control those mechanical movement also and when we are going to control those mechanical movement it becomes slower. So, since we are having a varieties of devices they transfer the information at different speed the working principle if, uh, is different for that we need this particular I O modules input output module. So, what basically we are doing sir if you consider that this is my processor. CPU, then what will happen directly I can connect the devices over say this is device 1 say this is device 2. So, if you follow this particular connection or say design procedure then what will happen to control those particular devices all the control circuits for those devices need to be included in the processor itself. Since, we are having varieties of devices. So, this circuit will become more complex and it will become bigger and bigger because you have to cater to all the peripheral devices. So, instead of pushing it inside this particular processor. So, why this what are the design methods you are following. So, we are having this particular processor CPU then we are connecting this particular I O module through system bus and all the devices we are connecting to this particular I O model. So, to perform those particular say device 1, device 2 like that device and so their functionalities are different, formats of data are different. So, all those things will be handled by this particular I O module and finally, this I O module is going to transfer the information to the processor. So, that is why we need the I O module we cannot push everything 
inside the processor, then the design issues of processor will become very complex. So, we are simply bring, bringing it out from the processor and putting it one unit called I O module. So, this is the need for the I O module. So, what that I O module does? This is nothing but the interface to CPU and memory and interface to one or more peripheral devices. So, basically what will happen already I have mentioned that this is the processor CPU. So, we are connecting the I O modules. to the processor and to it we are connecting the devices. So, this is my device 1, this is my device 1. So, now this I O module can now connect or it can cater service to more, more number of devices and after that it is going to just work as an interfacing unit between your processor and devices. When we are going to transfer information from devices to processor, then what will happen? That I O model is going to collect information from this particular devices, then I O model transfer it from this buffer of the module to the processor. So, when we want to transfer something to the output devices, I O model is going to take the information from the processor and finally, I O model will transfer it to the output devices. So, this is act as an interfacing between processor and I O module. So, this is the way that we can think that this is we are having the system bus. In system bus, we are having three component address bus, data bus and control bus. So, this system bus uh, now we are having a processor. Now, this CPU is connected to this particular system bus and through this particular system bus, we are connecting this particular I O module. And to this I O module, now we are going to connect several devices. So, the I O model is going to act as an interfacing between my input output devices and the processor and it will be connected through this particular system bus. Now, what are the external devices that we are going to connect? So, the external devices now we can say one part is or one category is human readable. So, that we can at least read it or we can understand what basically happening through the computer. So, like that screen, if we are displaying something or say if you press some keys in the keyboard, then that character will be displayed in the screen. Similarly, printer. So, if we are storing something in our hard disk, now we can uh, transfer it to the printer and we can print it. So, these are basically human readable devices like screen, printer, keyboard and like that. So, we are having some devices which are machine readable. So, this machine readable devices are basically used for monitoring and controlling purposes. So, in this particular case, I can give a simple example. So, when we are using our computers at to switch on a machine or to work with a machine, sometimes we used to give password. So, when you enter a password, then only you can enter it into the machine and you can work with a machine. Now, this is a password, it is a string of characters generally we use. But instead of that, what we can do? We can use some devices also, some other features also to unlock the computer. Like one simple example is your fingerprint. So, that means what will happen? We can lock our machine with the help of fingerprint. Now, when we are going to unlock it, at least we have to give our fingerprint to it. That means we have to connect a biometric devices to the computer. So, this is that fingerprint recognition. So, this is something like a machine readable devices like that we can we can get many more examples of the machine readable devices. The third category here talking about the storage devices. So, most of you know that you are having hard disk and many a time you say that the capacity of your hard disk is maybe your 500 GB or 1 terabyte. So, what basically we are doing? We are storing our information in hard disks. So, when we are going to work with the computer, we bring the information from hard disk to the main memory and processor is going to take the information from main memory and it will be going to put into the registers that we have inside the processor. So, in that particular case, so when we are talking about the storage or memory, so now you see that we can have an hierarchy of the memory. So, first we can talk about the registers inside the processor, then next level is your main memory, then next level is your you can say 
hard disks. Okay. So, this is the memory hierarchy and I think now after going through this particular course when you have gone through this memory module then I think you have encountered with one another kind of memory which is known as your cache memory. So, in the hierarchy cache memory will come after the register. So, top level hierarchy is your registers then cache memory, main memory and hard disk. If you see these things then what will happen? If you go from this top to bottom then what will happen? In that particular case the size increases. Okay, basically sir, we are having a few limited number of registers it may be 8, 16 or may be 32, but when we are coming to the cache memory it is slightly bigger. So, we can have that some MBs of your cache memory. Now, when we come to the main memory you will find that in main memory you are having 2 GB or 4 GB main memories nowadays, but when you come to the hard disk you will find that we are having a abundant capacity may be around 300 GB, 500 GB even terabyte also. So, size increases when you go from this particular register to the external devices like hard disk. So, these are the things. Now, in the second issues when you go in this direction then cost increases. So, cost per unit memory is increases. So, that is why we cannot keep everything in main memory or we cannot keep make give more register. If you are going to give more register then cost will increase. So, this is the way just we can look for the hierarchy. So, these are the external devices where we can store our information. So, like that we are having optical disks also many a times you know about the CD compact disks. Okay. So, you can store say one complete movie you can store in your CD. Now, when you are going to play the movie then what will happen? We are bringing the information from CD to the main memory and processor is going to take the information from main memory and accordingly it is going to display us. So, similarly we are having some devices for communication purpose also. So, one is your modem and another one is your network interface card. So, these are the communication devices. So, we are having a varieties of external devices, their purposes are different, the transfer rate is different, the format of data that we are storing information is different. So, to handle all those issues we are having this particular I O module. Now, we are going to see what basically we are having. So, now we said that this is I am having the processor CPU. So, this is connected to the I O module and different devices are connected to this particular this thing. So, this is a device. So, what basically we should have in the device? So, we should have a controller to control that particular device. So, this is the external device block diagram or the controlling of that particular device. So, what basically we are having? We are having a control logic over here. This control logic is going to receive the control signals from I O module. So, this is connected to these things. It is going to receive some control signal from the I O module. Depending on those particular control signals, this control logic is going to control the devices. Now, one example may be like that control that I O module is giving and control signal like that it wants to read some information from this device. Maybe you just think that this is a hard disk and we are going to read something from the hard disk. So, I O module is giving a signal control signal to it. Now, control logic is going to per perform the appropriate operation and it will give some signal to the I O module. Maybe one of the control signal may be the status of this particular device whether it is device is ready or not like that. So, some status information will be given to the I O model. Once I O model receive the status information then what will happen? Now, it knows that now it can transfer the information. So, in that particular case now this is the device that we are connecting to this particular controller. So, may be that hard disk that we are connecting to it. Okay. So, we are storing the information in this particular hard disk. Now, device controller is going to read the information and we are having a transducer over here. What transducer does basically? 
is basically if you look the basic definition or the generic definition of transducer basically it says that it transfer the energy from one model to the another form. So, here also you can say that it is transferring the information from one form to the other form. So, when we are talking about the hard disk the what is the basic principle this is magnetic in nature when you are using a CD then what is the nature this is the optical in nature that means we are storing information with the help of magnetic property or we are storing information by using the principle of light. So, now when we are going to get information then this transducer is going to convert it from that magnetic information magnetic information to the electronics information or electrical signal similarly that light in principle of light will be converted to the electrical signal. So, this transducer is going to convert information from one form to the other form and finally, it will be buffered over here and it will be stored in this particular device driver itself. So, you are having a very limited space over here like that when you press a key in the keyboard. So, it is a mechanical device. So, you are pressing it. So, what when we press the keyboard with respect to that particular key some information will be stored into the one buffer one register in that particular keyboard itself and after that that will be transferred to the processor through I O module. So, we are taking the information through transducer we are converting into the appropriate format that means we are converting or sending it to the electrical signals then we are storing it in the buffer and once we are getting it then we are going to give it to the I O module. So, that data is transferred to the I O module and once data is available in the I O module then I O module is going to transfer this information to the processor. So, this is the way we can look into it that means you just see that in the hierarchy now we are having three components one is your processor I O module is connected to the processor and the devices are connected to the I O module and for every device we are having a device driver. Okay. Or we can say that this is the control for that particular device. So, this de device what is the device we are having or what is the electronic circuit or what is the driver that we are having that is specific to a particular device. So, this is specific to this particular device. So, whatever the external device block diagram we are writing over here that will be specific to a particular device, but this I O module is generic one we can connect any type of I O devices to the I O module and that I O module will be connected to the processor. So, these are the steps that we are going to have when we are going to transfer information from say input devices to the processor and similarly when we are going to transfer information from processor to the output devices it will follow the same thing. So, basically now if the way I am saying that I am going to read something some information from this hard disk. Now, similarly we may want to store some information to this particular hard disk. Then what we are going to do from processor it will give to the I O module through I O module it is going to coordinate with this particular control signals after that from I O model it will be transferred to the, the device driver it will come to the buffer then from buffer through transducer it will going to convert it to the appropriate signal. So, if it is a hard disk then from electrical signal it will convert to the magnetic signals or if you are using a CD compact drives then what will happen that electrical signal will be converted to the light signal. Okay, this is the way we are going to transfer information. Now, what are the I O module function? Already I have explained many more things. So, this is in nutshell you can say that first one is your control and timing. So, this is the control circuit control logic circuit that we are having. So, we have to synchronize the time because the speed of this particular device is much slower than uh, processor. So, that is why we are having this particular buffering first we buffer it then we will transfer to the I O module from I O module to this thing. So, we have to synchronize the whole operation so that it works in a coherent manner. So, for that we need many more control signal and timing signal. So, this is basically generate the timing signal and generate the appropriate control signal to control the devices. So, in this particular module we are going to see what are the different kind of control that we may have for devices. It is difficult to discuss for all the devices at least we will discuss one devices to see what are the control signals that we have for that particular devices. Second one is your CPU communication already I said that that I O module is connected to the processor through this particular system bus. So, communication to the CPU will be done to this particular I O modules only. Then device communication just see the previous slide I am saying that 
through IO modules, we are connecting to a device. So, there is a communication between device and devices also. So, this is your device communication and this is your CPU communication. So, IO module is responsible for control and timing, CPU communication, device communication, another one is data buffering. Already I have mentioned that devices are working in different speed okay, and different format also. So, to transfer information from device to I O module will take more time, because device are basically slower than the processor. So, that is why I O module is going to buffer the information, first it will collect the information from input devices, it will buffer over there. When that I O module is collecting sufficient information, then it is going to transfer the information from I O modules buffers to the processor, because both are electronics component relatively they are having the same speed, but my devices are not properly electronics component, they are having mechanical movement also, so they are slower. So, this is the buffering. Secondly, say if you want to print some file, generally many a time you use to give now you write a letter, then you send it to the printer, you are going to get a printed copy of that particular letter. So, basically what it does, printer is a slower device, so if processor is going to directly going to interact with the printing or printer, then what will happen? Many a time processor need to wait. So, for that particular case, what will happen? First processor will transfer the information to the I O device, I O module. So, I O module is going to buffer it and after transferring a sufficient amount of information, then I O module will transfer that information to the printer and printer is going to carry out the printing job. So, this is the data buffering that is going to be carried out by I O module. So, this is a function of the I O module and another one is also error detection. So, sometimes it is a transfer of information, it is bit transfer only, we are transferring zeros and ones. So, if some zeros are converted to one during transfer then what will happen? We are going to get an error. So, we are getting an erroneous information. So, in some of the cases in I O modules can detect some of the errors also and it will notify the processor that whatever information you are getting it is having some error. So, that error detection is also a part of this particular I O module. So, it is a another functionality of the I O module. So, what are the I O steps? Now, just see that when I am explaining it, it is coming in a flow now. I think most of the things already I have mentioned when I discussed about this particular external device block diagram. So, now what after looking uh, <coughs> having knowing the functions of the I O module, now we are going to say what are the I O step. So, now you just see it is very clear now CPU sex I O modules device setters. So, basically first CPU sex it whether the what is the device status. Okay. Now, I O module returns the status. So, processor is going to say just think that particular example that we want to print a file. Now, we are giving a print command, now processor is going to carry out this particular job, then what will happen? Now, processor checks the status for I O modules. So, it is going to give a signals and it will say that we want to use the printer. Then what will happen? Now, I O module is going to check the status of the exit device, whether printer is ready or not, whether printer is switched on or not. If everything is ready, then I O modules returns the status. So, when processor get the status, yes it is ready, then what will happen? We can carry out the output operation, we are going to send the information to the printer. So, if it is ready, so once that I O module is returning the status, now processor is going to check whether it is ready or not. If it is ready, then CPU requests data transfer. So, it may be an input transfer or output transfer. For printer, it may be an input operation, oh sorry, for printer it may be an output operation, but if you are reading a file then it may be an input operation. So, if ready CPU requests the data transfer. Now, I O modules get the data from the device. So, here in this particular step if you are going to look into it basically we are going to talk about the input operation. If we are going to look for the output operation then this step would have been slightly different it will say that I O module would get the data from the processor basically. Now, here we are going to look for it. So, I O module get data from the device. So, since device is ready now I O module is going to get the information from device. So, basically if you say that I am going to read a file from a hard disk. So, now 
IO model is going to collect the information from the data because it is having a buffer. So, it is going to at least collect the information that may be accommodated in the buffer space. Then IO models transfer the data to the processor. Okay. Now, once it is collects the information, we are storing it in the buffer, then IO module will transfer it to the processor. Then this is the way that we are going to complete it. Now, here we are having variation of outputs and for that we are going to discuss what are the different ways you can do it. So, just we are saying that there are variations for output and variations for input also, where DMA will come into picture. So, we will discuss that thing also. Now, we have seen that device is there and for that we are having a device controller, we have seen these things. Now, these devices will be connected to the I O module. Now, just see the top level block diagram of the I O module. So, these are the things that we are going to connect to the processor, this side we are having the processor, processor and these are we are having the devices. So, this is connected through our system bus. So, they are having this particular data bus, we are having that address bus and we have this control lines. Okay. So, this is the system bus and we are connecting it to the processor. Now, here we are having two basic register, one is known as your data registers and second one known as your status or control registers. So, now say when processor requests for a device, then this I O module is going to check for the status of this particular device and accordingly status of device, then it will set this particular status bit over here and this particular status bit will be monitored by the processor and depending on the status bit, it is going to transfer the information and that transfer information will be go through this particular registers, which is a data register. So, similarly here we are having that address lines, we are giving the addresses and we are giving some controls like that whether it is an input operation or whether it is an output operation, all those things will come and after reaching this particular information that here we are having an logic circuitry, I O logic circuitry and this logic circuitry is going to identify which device basically we are going to use, it depends on the contents of the address line. So, we can connect different devices. So, it is going to identify one of the devices depending on the address, depending on the control lines, it will going to say what is the operation that we are going to perform, whether it is read or write. So, here we are having an external device interface. So, maybe here we may have a space for buffer also. So, we are going to collect the information to the buffer and from that buffer through this data register, we are going to transfer it to the processor. So, this is again another interface logic circuit that we are having to handle this particular I O devices. So, one simple control signal I can think about, I can just mention here like that. So, when we are going to print a file, then what will happen? We have to place the printer head at the proper position, maybe start of the line. So, this control signal, it will send a control signal like that, this particular interface logics to initiate the printing job to set the printer properly. That means, bringing the printer head to the proper position. So, these are the control signal that we have to see. So, this is the way that we are going to connect. So, this is the generic view of I O modules. So, according to our requirement, we have to design these things. So, these are the basic components we should have. One is data register, one is status or control register, one control logic circuitry and device interface logic circuit for different devices. So, what is the I O modules decision? Already we have seen the functionalities. So, basically what did this? It is hide or reveal device properties to the CPU because so processor is going to work to the electronic signal, it is basically going to work to the bridge stream of 0s and 1. So, in what format we are storing in the device, in what way we are organizing the our information, this may not be relevant for the processor. So, we can hide those information and we can shift everything to the I O module and I O module is going to take care of everything. So, it may either hide or in some cases it may reveal the device properties to the processor also. Support multiple or single devices. So, already here I have said that we are having a provision to support multiple devices. Generally, we are having I O models to support multiple devices. Control device function or leaves for processor. In most of the cases, it is going to control the device function also basically like that. One example I can say that while going to print it, I have to place the printer head in a proper position. So, that will be done by my that 
I O module. So, this is some controlling of the devices also some I O decision. So, depending on the instruction that we have in the instructions of, of the processor, we can write the appropriate routine for my operating system. So, some O S decision will also be taken care by I O module because you have to send something to the I O module also. So, these are said one for example, it says that if we have that Unix operating system say you know that we are having several operating system one is Unix may be Windows most of you are accustomed with the Windows. So, in case of Unix operating system it is defined like that everything will be treated as a file. So, if you are connecting an I O devices that I O devices will be treated as a file that means it will set up simply say that it is having a file ID and with the help of that file ID we are going to control that particular devices. So, some OS decision will also be transferred to the I O models all right. Now, what are the defined techniques that we have in our input output how we are going to do it. So, if you look into that way of transferring information basically we are going to get three different way of transfer information one is your programmed I O second one is your interrupt driven and third one is your direct memory access or DMA. So, here we are going to discuss about those three different techniques the way we are going to transfer our information. So, in this particular case in a nutshell I am going to just give you the brief idea what are the differences between these three methods. So, this diagram it says that we are going to perform some I O operations. So, CPU initiated to the I O devices then read status of the I O module. So, processor is going to read the status whether device is ready or not. So, in that particular case if device is not ready it will check whether now device is ready if it is not ready then it will remain over here. So, it will keep on waiting in that particular loop. So, basically we say this is the busy waiting and during that time processor is not doing any work ok. Processor is idle just it is busy of checking this particular status. One the device is ready then it will going to perform the other operation may be take the information from the input devices put it into the memory again after completion of this job again go to this. List. Now, you just see this is the point where we have to look into it. Processor want to work with an input output devices and it is going to check the status if it is not ready then it will be in this particular loop and we say this is the busy waiting and in that particular time processor is not doing any useful work. So, this is the wastage of our processor time. So, this is called programmed I O we are going to control the devices with the help of one program and through that program we are going to check it. Here main drawback is your wastage of processor time. So, that is why we are thinking how that wastage of time can be minimized or can be removed. So, for that that second one is coming which is your interrupt driven I O. So, this portion is same now what will happen now processor is going to give a signal or give intimate to the I O module that processor want to do some I O operation may be taking something from the input devices or going to put something into the output devices. After giving this information to the I O module now processor is going to carry out its own work it is not going to wait for the status it is not going to check the status of the device it is just simply give the information to the modules and after that processor is going to carry out its own work because if we are executing a program processor is going to execute that program from that particular point. Now, when I O module is getting this particular information now that processor want to interact with some input output devices then I O module is going to look for the status of this particular input devices or maybe output devices when device is ready and everything is there just to start of the transfer of the operation at that particular time that I O devices is going to give the information to the processor. This is we said this is now input output module is going to interrupt the processor. Now, interrupt is doing some job now I O module is going to interrupt it. So, at that particular point now processor will be knowing that now that device is ready or data is ready now processor can work with this particular input output device. So, after it is the check status and carry out this particular transfer of information after completion of the transferring of information again it will go to this point. So, here in this particular case user ship what we have done we are eliminating that particular busy waiting or wastage of time, but now come to this particular point what we are doing 
when you are going to have the read then from I O devices we are going to transfer it to the processor and processor we are going to put it to the memory this is an input operation just say that from we want to take some information from hard disk and we want to put into the memory so first we are bringing into the processor we are bringing into the processor means we are putting into some register of the processor and from that processor register we are putting into the memory similarly if i want to write some things or save some file to the hard disk then what will happen first we are going to take it from the memory to the some register of processor and from that processor register we are going to transfer it to the I O module and from I O module it will go to the output device maybe hard disk. So, you just see during this transfer the processor is involved, processor cannot do any other work it is simply transferring the information from maybe hard disk to the memory or maybe from memory to the hard disk. So, again we are thinking now how to eliminate this particular involvement of processor so that direct you can some other way you can simply transfer the information from hard disk to the memory directly without the intervention or without taking help of the processor. So, data need not to go through the processor. So, for that this third process is coming which is known as your DMA direct memory access. So, in that particular case what will happen now say when we want to read a file from hard disk to the processor memory then what will happen instead of sending through my processor register straight away you can bring it from hard disk to the memory. So, this is direct memory access. So, initially the processor involvement is there like that to initiate the input output operation, but at later point of time this processor involvement is not may not be required directly you can transfer it from hard disk to the memory or from memory to the hard disk. So, this is basically talk about the bulk data transport say if I want to transfer a file size of say 1 MB. So, I have to transfer a whole file. So, without taking the intervention of the processor it processor will initiate the transfer after that straight away we are going to transfer it from memory to the sorry hard disk to the memory or maybe in case of writing from memory to the hard disk. So, this is we are accessing directly. So, we said this method is your DMA direct memory access. So, now in this particular module now we are going to see the design issues and the working issues or what are the intricacies that we have for these three kind of transfer all right. Now, for that first one we are going to say how about the program drive it is already I have mentioned that what basically we used to do we have to check the status continuously once it is ready we have to do it. So, basically it is a sensing of status then using the read write command then transferring of data this is the way that we are going to do, but here what is the problem that we have faced CPU needs to wait and P it is checking it continuously. So, it cannot do any other work. So, there is a wastage of CPU time. So, basically you just see that if you are going to connect something like that this processor is going to maybe one bit of this status register is going to continuously monitored and if it is set to one that means device is ready then it is going to perform the transfer operation. So, this is our programmed I O. So, basically this is now programmer's details, details now we just say these are the simple sets. First one CPU request I O operation that in flowchart we have shown it I O module perform operation then by looking into the state of the devices I O module set the status bit CPU set status bit periodically I O module does not inform CPU directly. Now, you just see that here I O module is not going to inform the CPU directly that device is ready, but in case of interrupt driven in some way in some way I O module is going to inform this particular things to the processor. So, I O module does not inform the processor directly. So, processor is going to continuously check it then I O module does not interrupt CPU. So, in that particular case I O module does not interrupt CPU. Now, CPU may wait or come back later this is another issue say if I after waiting for some more time CPU may feel this ok it is now going to abandon this particular I O operation it may again you see that I O common at some later point. point of time. So, this is the way that I O module is doing it. Now, after that to perform work with the I O module or input output devices what are the basic requirements already I mentioned that we need some commands I O commands. So, first the issues for that I O command is like that 
how to identify the module. So, that means we have to have an device address. So, this is the one point how we are going to give the addresses of the I O devices like that when we are discussing about some operation like that reading some information from memory or writing some information to the memory say one example I think I have mentioned something like that L D A load accumulator from some memory location. That means, if it is an accumulator based machine then we are having a register called accumulator. So, we want to load something to that particular register accumulator from some memory location. So, we have to give the address of this particular memory location. So, in the instruction we have to give the address like that when we are going to perform the I O operation first of all we have to give the address of the devices from which we are going to take information or to whom we are going to give the information. So, this is the addressing scheme we have to see and we will see how we are going to give it. Then issue some control commands. So, basically some control commands we have to issue just to initiate the process like that already I have explained. If we want to print something in the printer we should send some control signal to the printer to initiate it or maybe to bring the printer head to the appropriate position. Similarly, when we are going to read something to the from the hard disk then what will happen we have to bring the appropriate location of the hard disk to the input output head. We will elaborate this thing. So, basically so spin the disk we have to rotate the disk. So, those command we have to give like that checks the status whether it is ready or not whether power is on or not all those things status signals we are having and read and write. So, one is this is the mode of transfer whether read basically we said that we are taking something from the input device and write we are saying that we are going to put some information in the output device. So, this is the read and write. So, basically we need some instruction to perform this read write instruction also. So, so the command related to control the I O device can be now okay, look into three different categories one is your controlling, second one is your test and third one is your read and write. So, these are the commands that we have to design that means, in our instruction set we have to put some commands to carry out this particular work. Now, how to address an I O devices? So, in that particular case it is basically now already I said that we have to give an unique identification to the processor or to the devices. So, for that we have to give an address. So, again this address is nothing but an bit stream of 0 and 1 because we are going to work with the 0 and 1 only. So, basically like that the like memory address which is a bit stream of 0 and 1 then what will happen in that particular case we are assigning a particular code to the memory unit or memory location similarly we are going to assign a particular code to the input output devices which will be treated as an address for that particular device and that address has to be unique because we have to identify device uniquely. When we are going to use the printer we have to give a unique code for the printer or unique address to the printer when we are going to use your hard disk we have to give an unique address to the hard disk. So, basically this is the address scheme. So, what is the address? It is very much similar to the address of a memory location which contains 0's and 1's ok that is all. So, in binary we can say 0's and 1 or we can say it is having a particular number. Now, how we are going to give this particular address? How we are going to map this particular input output device? So, for that we have to look I O mapping. So, how we are going to map the I O devices to the processor, so that we can identify that particular device correctly. So, in that particular case we are having two different ways of doing it, one is your memory mapped I O and second one is your isolated I O. So, I will just simply explain it with the help of small example. Now, you just said that we are having the processor and I am having said this is the address bus, we are connecting the memory. Okay. Now, in memory map IO it says that same address space is paired by or uh, shared by my memory and input output devices. Now, you consider that size of my address bus is your 16, then what is the memory capacity? if my size of address bus is 16, 
you should know it now. So, this is your 2 to the power 16, which is your 64 k. So, we can have 64 k memory location. Now, address will go from 0 0 0 to all f f f f. Okay. Now, out of this particular 64 k addresses, what will happen? Some of the addresses are reserved for my your I O devices. So, total address space is my 64 k. Now, I am not going to use 64 k memory location, we will use less memory location, but some of the memory location will be your going to identify the I O devices. Now, say now I am going to consider that I am going to look for the memory location from 0 0 to f f f 0 say these are the addresses that we are going to use for memory. Then what are the addresses are remaining left? This is your f f f 1 to f f f f. So, that means 15 addresses are remaining left. So, this 15 addresses can be used to identify my input output devices. That means, in this if I am separating the address space in this particular way, I can connect 15 different I O devices to the processor. Okay. That means, in entire memory space I am having address space 64 k, out of that some of the addresses are used to connect the memory that means, that many memory location we can use and 15 addresses are kept reserved for my I O devices and whenever I am going to give this particular addresses or addresses from this particular range, we are going to identify input output devices. So, if this is the way we are going to resolve the address of I O devices, we will say this is your memory mapped I O. Okay. Now, another one is your isolated I O. So, in case of isolated I O, the memory space and I O space are different. So, now if you consider the same example, then what will happen? We are having 16 as size of address bus is 16. So, we can go for 64 k. So, when I am going to have this isolated I O, then we can have memory space 64 k. Similarly, we can have 64 k I O space. That means, we can connect 64 k that means, 64 kilo which is equal to 2 to the power 16 which is equal to 65000 something you can calculate it. That means, more than 65000 devices can be connected to the processor. Okay. So, this is the isolated I O we are having defined address space. Now, in that particular case what will happen? We are giving the addresses through this particular address bus because we are having an one address bus only which is a part of my system bus and to this particular system bus we are connecting the I O module also. Now, how to identify whatever addresses that we have put in this particular address bus, it is an address of a memory location or it is an address of an I O devices. So, to identify these things, so we are going to use one more control signal, we are having several control signal will come through this particular control bus. So, processor is having an control signal and in most of the cases this control signal name is given as I O M bar that means input output memory. So, by looking into it what will happen if the signal of this particular signal I O M bar is 0. So, M bar that means we are taking the complement of it that means if the control signal available in this particular I O M bar is 0 it will say that basically it is going to look for a memory. That means, whatever address we have over here, it will be an address of a memory location. And when this I O M bar is 1, this is your I O devices or maybe I O model. So, when the control signal value is 1, then whatever address we have kept in this particular address bus, this will be treated as an address of an I O module or I O devices. That means, this I O module is going to now use this particular address. But if the value of this particular signal is 0, then this address will be the address of this particular memory location. Now, you just see that we are having two ways of mapping this particular I O devices, one is your memory mapped I O and second one is your isolated I O. 
all right. So, in case of isolated I O, we are going to get a bigger I O space because equal number of memory location and equal number of I O devices, but in case of memory map, we are going to reach up some of the memory addresses for identifying the I O devices. So, I O space is limited over here. So, this is the way that we can look into it and for that now again I can say that since in case of your memory mapped I O, what will happen in that particular case? this is nothing but an address of a memory location, but we are attesting to a I O devices. So, whatever memory operation that we are having say memory read and memory write, then same operation can be used for those particular I O devices. So, in most of the cases we are talking about say L D A load accumulator or say S T A store accumulator, one is your read command another is write command. So, for that load accumulator we are going to load something to the accumulator. So, in that particular case what will happen? Now, we are giving the address of the memory location. So, if the address happen to be an address of I O device that means, we are going to take the information from I O device and going to put into the accumulator. So, that means, same instruction can be used for memory as well as I O devices if we are using memory mapped I O. But if we are using isolated I O, then we have to have separate instruction to control this particular I O devices. So, in most of the cases, we are going to get some I O commands like that. So, that is why I am saying that some special I O command. So, these are the I O commands that what we are having in most of the cases, we can get like that one command is your in, another command is your out, in device address, and out device address. Okay. So, in case of in whatever address device address you are giving from that particular address you are going to get the information and going to bring it to the processor and in case with the help of out instruction the information of the processor register can be sent to the output devices. So, these are the issues basically we have one is your addressing scheme second one is what are the commands that we need to handle this particular input output devices and along with that I think we have already used those particular program I O details in that particular scheme it is that in in out or input and output will be controlled by a program and what this program is going to do we are going to execute this particular program that in a loop it is going to check the status of that particular status bit once status bit is ready then this program is going to execute the other part that means going to transfer the information. So, with the help of one simple program we are doing it which is not as your device service routine in it is basically to control that particular device we need a program we say this is the device service routine we are going to execute it instead the program itself we are going to check the status once the status is ready then we are going to carry out the input output operation. So, this is the way we are going to transfer information in program IO and for that we need the addressing of the devices and we need the command. So, these are the things that we have discussed in this particular unit. Now, look for the some test items and here I am giving the first test item like that question 1, what is an I O module, why an I O device need to be treated specially and cannot be directly connected to the CPU. So, like memory you are directly connecting to the CPU, but in I O device you are not directly connecting to the CPU, because already I have mentioned it that integrity of the processor will increase. So, that is why you are transferring the responsibility to the I O modules and for that we need the I O modules. So, basically here we are addressing this particular question and we are meeting the objective one that we have cited for the objective of this particular unit. Second one I am saying that explain the basic functionalities of an I O module. Again this is in the some knowledge level only this is the objective one again we are meeting it and I think I have explained it what are the functionalities that we are having for the I O module. What is the addressing scheme of I O devices? this is basically objective 2 we have mentioned and we are mapping this thing and I think now you know how we are going to give the address of an I O devices this is similar to the memory address only. Question 4, what are the step involved in I O instruction? So, we are meeting the objective 3 and we just said that already I have mentioned that step this is basically processor is going to give the information to the I O modules then I O module check the status, it will report to the processor, then processor is going to start the transfer of this thing. So, basically you have to see what are the step involved for this input and output instruction. Question 5, explain how data transfer is performed between CPU and I O device using program I O techniques. 
and this is in the design level and that means we are just meeting the objective 4 if we can perform this particular or we can solve this particular problem. So, already I have explained it is nothing but a program we are writing it and we are having a loop it will be in that particular loop until that device is ready on device is ready then it is going to execute the remaining part of the program and that program will be known as my device service routine. Okay. So, these are the things that we have discussed over here and I think that at least you can have idea now how we are going to transfer information from input and output devices to the processor. So, with that I am going to wind up the lecture today. Thank you very much.